Hi guys, it's Dylan from Bijou Diamond Jewelry in London with another watch discussion video and today we're discussing the subject of whether or not watches are overpriced these days. Um, I'm going to combine into the video as well a little overview at the prices and movement in prices we've seen on certain watches in the last year. Okay, so let's start with some prices. Um, for on certain watches and we're going to look at what they were at the beginning of the year and now at the end of the year um, for 2018. So we're going to start with the watch that we have with us today which is the uh, Rolex Daytona 116 500 which is the new uh, ceramic Daytona released in 2016. That was going for around uh, 14, 15,000 pounds beginning of the year and now that's going for 19,000 pounds or up to 19,000 pounds sometimes over but average is between, you know, between 18 and 19,000 pounds. So quite a considerable increase in price there. Uh, another watch is the Rolex Submariner in steel, the reference 116610 LV, which is also known as the Hulk. Uh, and that started the year around the 8,000 pound mark and is now selling for around 11,500 pounds, sometimes more, sometimes a little bit, bit less, but uh, the average is 11,000 pounds. Next, we have the Patek Philippe 5980 1R 001, aka the Nautilus or Chronograph Nautilus. Um, that has done incredibly well. The beginning of the year, that was sort of uh, late £50,000, early £60,000, and now that's going for mid £90,000, which is just amazing. That's done so well this year. Probably the best performing watch of the year um, in terms of increase. In this list isn't including um, sort of limited edition watches or uh, kind of more sought after or rarer watches. This is just normal production watches that you can buy from uh, Patek Philippe or Audemars Piguet, Rolex, etc. Uh, the next one we have is another watch or another Nautilus from Patek Philippe and that is the 5711 in steel with the blue dial. Uh, that started the year in for a new one for around the late 20 mark, late 20,000 pound mark. Um, and now we're looking at mid £40,000 for a new one, sometimes more. Another brand we should look at is Audemars Piguet. Audemars Piguet hasn't always been at the top in terms of investments, so the aftermarket value for their watches was usually less than the retail price, um, unlike Patek Philippe and Rolex on certain models. Uh, but this year has seen a change in that, um, and we started the year, well, we're gonna look at the 15202, the Royal Luck Extra Thin that we looked at last week in last week's video. Um, that started the year around the early £20,000 mark for a new one and now you're looking at uh, over £30,000 for a new one for that watch. So that's now selling for over list price uh, for a new one, considerably over and it's extremely difficult to get as well. Uh, another watch from Audemars Piguet uh, is the 15400 which is just the standard 41mm Royal Oak from Audemars Piguet, kind of really their entry level watch um, and we're going to look specifically at the blue dial. Uh, that blue dial 15400 reference at the beginning of the year was selling for around £14,000 uh, which is just under its retail price um, but back then it was actually in line with its retail price um, and now that's selling for over £20,000 so that's a massive jump in price those have just gone crazy because people love uh, steel watches with blue dials. If those kind of are the big main brands the Rolex, Audemars Piguet and Patek Philippe for increasing in value there are other brands that, out there that do increase in value as well um, or have watches that are popular and increase in value, but those three are kind of the major um, players in the game of the watch industry. So that's kind of some numbers on the, what these watches are selling for or have been selling for throughout the year. That's kind of a price review on some of the big boys in the industry. Um, but now I want to kind of look at the argument of whether or not these are overpriced or not. So I'm going to split the discussion or the debate up into two sections. Uh, I'm going to give my points for the argument for that these are overpriced and then second half will be the argument against they're overpriced. Um, so let's start with four being overpriced. Uh, so reasons why they are overpriced these days. And the watches I'm specifically talking about are um, watches with an inflated aftermarket value relative to their retail value. For example, a steel Daytona. So if we have a look through the list of watches we just looked at, you can notice that most of them are steel watches. Apart from uh, the rose gold uh, 5980, and maybe a watch I could have mentioned as well is the Rose Gold 5711. Um, and there's a couple other watches in there that maybe I could have mentioned as well, specifically from Patek Philippe that have done really well that are Rose Gold. Um, majority of investment watches or watches that have done well this year are steel watches. Something I find a really big shame about that is the fact that the, these steel watches, like the Steel Daytona, 
is designed to be the entry level model for that line of, of or that specific uh, model from Rolex. So uh, it's designed to be the entry level variant, I mean, for that uh, for the Daytona. So people want to buy the steel Daytona because it's the most affordable Daytona. And then after that, you've got, you know, your golds, your bimetals, and then your platinum watches. So, um, and then diamonds, obviously, as well as that. Um, so I think it's a shame that now these prices are going so high because it means that people can't buy these entry level watches or the entry level client can no longer buy that entry level watch. So for me, it kind of defeats the object of that watch. Uh, you know, it's designed to be an entry level watch that people could start a collection with. You know, the Steel Daytona is a brilliant watch or a Steel Submariner is a brilliant watch for people to be able to start a collection of Rolexes with um, or other watches as well. But now those people that used to start there in terms of the watch collecting well, you know, with the steel watches can no longer do that because they now have to pay twice the retail price. So for example, this steel Daytona here retails at 9,550 pounds, but it sells for uh, double that, 18,500 pounds, 19,000 pounds um, all day long, especially if you're looking at the white dial. So now those people are unable to buy that more affordable watch, it's now kind of inaccessible. It's not that the brands are, are inflating these prices, like I said, the retail price on this is half of its market value, but the brands are slightly to blame for these really increased prices or you know inflated prices on these watches because they are keeping the supply low and, and allowing that demand to increase and increase and increase um, so much so that these watch prices go up and up and up. Uh, so they are part to blame for it. The shame is that they are not profiting from that sort of extra uh, you know, list of people that would love to own that watch. There's tons of people out there that would love to be able to start their collection, like I said, with a steel Submariner, steel Daytona, because um, it's a great place to start. And it's a brilliant everyday watch as well. Uh, but they are unable to do that because Rolex wants to keep their supply small. Um, and the people that they're supplying them to at retail price in the boutiques really are people that have bought uh, loads of other gold watches or expensive diamond watches or platinum watches um, and have a long-term relationship with that brand, which is, in my opinion, backwards of how it should be. It should be that they, the brand should allow new people, um, you know, first-time buyers to be able to buy the steel models because they're the most affordable models, uh, whereas actually the brands are asking you to buy loads of platinum watches and expensive, you know, much higher-end precious metal watches before you're allowed to buy the basic entry-level watch, which doesn't really make sense. Um, but that's the way they set it up now. Uh, and I think it's really is a big shame. And that really is a big argument for me for why these are becoming overpriced um, and why I think it is a real shame that actually uh, the brands are setting up their, their model, their business model like that. Okay, so now let's move on to the second half um, of the argument, which is that the prices are not overpriced. Um, and this is really where my opinion is. I don't think they're overpriced. And really the proof is in the pudding. If we look at the numbers that we mentioned at the beginning of the video, uh, so the prices beginning of the year and at the end of the year, again, if we use this steel Daytona, the beginning of the year, this was selling for around 14 to 15,000 pounds. Now it's selling for up to 19,000 pounds and sometimes more. So if they were overpriced, they wouldn't be increasing in price. And also they would be sitting stagnant in, a, in the market, uh, not selling, and eventually there would be a price correction and the prices would drop rather than increase. So considering that, um, if the prices are increasing over the years, then we know that the demand is also increasing and the supply is staying the same. Therefore, the prices are not overpriced. Those prices are the correct market value for that watch um, and people are continuing to be happy to pay considerably, or in fact, this case, double the retail price. Um, and not only that, but continue to pay more and more and more over the retail price as the months go on through the year. Beginning of the year, this was 5,000 pounds over retail. Now this is twice actually nine and sometimes a little bit more, almost 10,000 pounds more than the retail price. So if it was overpriced, we wouldn't see a continual climb in the price of the watches. We would see a stagnant market and watches just sitting and then eventually falling in price. So that's a really important thing to think about when people complain that these watches are too expensive now or become overpriced and they shouldn't be there. Um, the fact is that the, uh, they are still selling at a premium and I can't see it finishing anytime soon. I can see it probably continuing to go up especially in the UK now with Brexit and uncertain times with Brexit, uh, people tend to put the money into assets like watches, jewelry, um, because they're stable assets. Uh, these, especially watches and diamonds as well, they're increasing in value and they're just brilliant things to put your money in. So for us in the UK, I can only see that it will just continue increasing in price 
I can't see that changing anytime soon. Another thing that you have to consider as well is when you feel uncomfortable buying at a premium, um, just look back at those numbers previous, you know, in the previous year, for example now, if I was worried about paying £14,000 for this 116 500 uh, back in January or February, say, um, and I was worried about paying that price then, then I wouldn't be so worried if I was sitting there now and this watch has now increased by three grand or whatever, um, you know, over that time. So I think you have to think relative to where the watch is moving or has been moving. Uh, when you make your decision of it being overpriced or the correct market value. If it's on the rise, like a lot of steel watches now, especially Rolexes, Patek Philippe's, Audemars Piguet, uh, then you're always going to be able to sell it for more if you hold on to it for long enough. Therefore, you haven't brought it at an overpriced price uh, because you've made a little bit of money on it. Another thing we have to consider as well is these are incredibly difficult to buy at the retail price. Uh, as I mentioned before, most of the clients that are buying these at retail price in the boutiques are really uh, clients who are existing, long existing clients of Rolex um, and who have bought many big pieces with them over the years. Um, and usually those clients don't sell those watches, uh, usually they end up keeping them. So the supply is very, very small at retail price uh, and therefore I think it's unfair to say that that is really the end price for this watch. That is the price, £9,550 for this steel Daytona. When actually, if you really want this watch, uh, then the actual market value is £18,000. If you wanted to buy this watch today, you would be able to get it for £18,000. If you wanted to buy it today and you only wanted to pay £9,500, if you walk into a boutique and ask Rolex for this watch, uh, they probably laugh you out the boutique and maybe say, wait another 12 years and we might have one for you. Uh, by then, it's probably going to be a 20, uh, 20 odd thousand pound watch easily by then. So yeah, it's important to think about the fact that actually it's not available at that retail price. Uh, it is available at this newer market price, which is £18,000 on this Daytona. And I think really when we'll know if the market is or has become overpriced or watches have become overpriced, and we have seen it on certain models, um, is when it becomes officially overpriced is when it starts to sit, like I said before, the watches sit stagnant, they don't sell, um, the prices then eventually get corrected and go down. Um, but usually you can tell that when the prices start to slow down their increase uh, and then the watches aren't selling, then you know you've got an overpriced watch. But until then, these are just going to keep going up and up and up. Uh, I don't see that happening anytime soon for steel Rolexes or uh, Patek Philippe Nautiluses. I think probably the most stable will be the steel Rolexes though. So overall, my opinion uh, of the two arguments, for me, I think that these watches are not overpriced. I think if this is the market value of the watch and it's forever increasing, for example, the 5980, we have to adjust the price on that watch all the time because it just continues to grow and grow and grow. Each week, the price on that watch changes. It goes up and up and up. Um, so therefore, if the market value is increasing, then it's not an overpriced watch. I think as well, we've seen an interesting movement in terms of uh, what we see as value or precious um, watches. So for example, now a steel Daytona is seen as incredibly precious in most people's eyes. Precious is something that's of value and that is rare perhaps, um, you know, very sought after and that's exactly what a steel Daytona is. Even though the metal, the precious metals like platinum or um, rose gold, yellow gold, even though those are seen as more conventionally precious, actually the steel watches are becoming more precious. And there's many reasons for that and it kind of shows the fact that the steel Daytona has had a waiting list since the 1980s. Uh, people love it because it's a brilliant everyday wearer watch. It's really nice and understated because it's in steel. It's a very uh, plain looking watch. It's very understated and clean looking. It suits almost any occasion. By having it in steel, it's brilliant for everyday because it's much harder wearing than most other metals. Yes, platinum is much more dense. So uh, when you dink it, you're not losing metal. Um, whereas this is much harder than the platinum. So those dents and, and dinks and scratches are a little bit harder to uh, put on the watch than it is on a platinum watch. Of course, rose gold is extremely soft and yellow gold also. Um, so it's a much better everyday watch. You're not going to scratch it as easily. It's not going to look tarnished as quickly as precious metals. Uh, it's also the best investment watch you can buy. You know, like I said, on that list of watches we looked through earlier on in the video, pretty much all of those were steel watches. Uh, they are the best investment watches. There's only really upsides to a steel watch. Uh, the only downside is obviously that it doesn't look as expensive as a precious metal watch. But I think people are becoming more educated that it's not just so uh, you know, binary that is either colored 
or not. And if it's colored gold, so uh, you know, rose gold, yellow gold, it's expensive. And if it's steel or platinum looking or silver, then it's not expensive. Um, I think people are starting to understand uh, as the industry becomes more and more, or much more interest is being generated around uh, the watch industry, I think people are becoming much more interested in models and understanding actually what is of value, what is precious, and that really is increasingly becoming those steel Rolexes, steel Nautiluses, and steel Audemars Piguet watches. Any watch that has an extensive waiting list, that is a precious watch. So to conclude, as long as those prices keep increasing, I think that these watches are not overpriced. Um, I can't see them slowing down, and I think they're just gonna keep on going and going and going. Thanks guys for watching. Let us know in the comments what you think of uh, this uh, discussion. Would you say, that, or would you side with uh, these watches being overpriced, or would you side with them being correctly priced? Um, I think it's a really interesting discussion that we have actually with a lot of our clients. Uh, some of them find it frustrating, some of them find it exciting. You know, we found and met a lot of new clients because lots of people are actually just buying watches for investment now. So there's advantages to the situation and disadvantages. Um, but we'd be interested to see what you guys think. Thank you.